As 2023 draws to a close, so has yet another year where projects remain unfinished and this old house remains half done. But hidden behind an unassuming door, down that narrow little corridor in this 1880s house, was one that seemed surmountable. And so, in November, an old house renovation story begun. Should we get in the cupboard? <laughs> Behind this door is a 140 year old space that has not been looked after for a very, very long time in this house. And it really was just a dumping ground. We just piled loads of stuff up in there. It was kind of a coat cupboard as well, but it wasn't really functioning in the right way for us or for anybody, I would hazard a guess. So we embarked on a project, project to transform this space. We needed to make it really functional for ourselves because we have, for the size of our Victorian townhouse, and also I think for how elegant it looks from the front, we have quite a short hallway. You're greeted by the stairs almost as soon as you walk through the front door. So there's nowhere in here um, to hang coats really, and definitely nowhere to kind of have loads of shoes lying about on the floor. It would be an absolute health and safety hazard but also it would just be hugely chaotic when you walk through the front door. So we needed this understairs cupboard to work for us. I have an absolute obsession with interiors and interior styling within the home. And so just because it's stuck behind a door and hidden away doesn't mean that it can't be a really lovely space that welcomes you as well. So that was really why we started on this project. However, Whilst we almost finished it back in late 2021, early 2022, there were three items that we hadn't resolved. And so today we're embarking on the final instalment of this project. And we're also gonna take you through a little bit of a snapshot of how this story began. Shame we don't sell. The screws to match. I'm very distressed because I've got a notification from Dunelm to tell me my light um, that I've ordered for that upstairs cupboard. Yeah, the light that I ordered about five, I think I ordered it last Sunday. Um, they've just suddenly messaged me today to say, oh, actually, we can't deliver it. We're out of stock. I don't know how it's taken them that long to decide that. He has fixed the hinges to the, this box chest bench thing. I don't think he'd done that um, when I left you last. And he's also zinzered the lid as well because that was just the brown MDF. Um, this is obviously the same tongue and groove that's pre-primed anyway. So that's gonna be your second one. Let's have a look. So that's your, that's your third there. Okay. That'll be your second one. Yeah, I think that. And then put it into sort of that be your bottom one. Yeah, that is more what I was thinking. Because cool. you kind of want, if you're gonna get baskets, you kind of want them to fit almost like a little bit snug underneath there in a way. Not really snug, but you know what I mean. Snug. Snug. <laughs> we worked tirelessly for multiple weekends, shiplapping walls, cleaning sanding, painting, and finding the right elements to bring our hidden space to life. 
these two. These are untouched. I have now completed all of the painting of kind of walls and ceiling in here. So I've done about three coats of Dulux um, eggshell in Brilliant White. And I've got the first coat of our floor paint on. We're using again our kind of um, Rust-Oleum chalk white matte finish floor paint. Um, it's what I've used on all of our like stairs and landings and stuff as well. <laughs> One shot, and if he screws it up, then he screwed up the whole thing. We are picking up where we left off about a year ago, which was with our understairs cupboard that we have really tried to make really functional for ourselves but also I have a thing about making even the small kind of hidden spaces really beautiful as well and we got a really good way with that project we practically finished it but there were just some finishing touches that we didn't really get around to doing and we just paused on it across the last year so across 2022 what's happened is we've put lots of things back in this cupboard and it's become basically a dumping ground again which was not what this was meant to become. I'm gonna get stuck into this cupboard. So first of all, I need to clear it all out again. Um, I'm gonna do some measuring up for some storage bits that I wanna to get today. And I'm gonna start inquiring about the last few bits and pieces that I need to sort with this. But I can also kind of show you again and remind you where we got to. So, this is how the shelves are currently looking, not how they're meant to be looking. The shelves are fine, the placement of the items on them is not. And look, that must have come out of our um, hoover, because <laughs> we have not had a Christmas tree in here. I'm gonna measure underneath my bottom shelf because the aim is to have baskets underneath there and, sorry, oh, pain. Um, a different basket for a couple of different things. So maybe like one basket for some cleaning stuff because we've only got a really small cupboard in the kitchen that can have clean stuff in. A basket for kind of hats and gloves and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get them from this furniture shop in town called Cotswold company and I want to get to them before they shut at 5.30. I love this because <laughs> I just set live a video today of the last two days of my life at home and it's meant to be like a really realistic view of when things are just not perfect by any stretch of the imagination and in that I tidied up my dining room and I would just like to say that we are not even 24 hours on and look just this is honestly just renovation dreams <laughs> and a room that actually wasn't messy <laughs> now is as well absolutely fantastic look at this absolute nightmare so this was an absolute nightmare to carry back home but I got them. I've dropped £145 on baskets. To know, this is the Cotswold Company. We have a store in town here. And I just wanted the ease of just picking them up without ordering them online. Online, you have to wait a few weeks for them. But interestingly, they're all stickered up wrong. They're all more expensive in store than they are online. Um, the small baskets are £20 each. And they had them stickered up as £35. So, yeah, just something to be mindful of. Right, so I've cleared mostly things out. This, I'm just gonna leave in. Um, but I've managed to spin it around, which is good. And I think I can fit three baskets there. If I can't, it's a bit of a boo-boo, but never mind. Um, this is some storage that I just wanted, basically. I've got lots of like seasonal, you can see there my Halloween plates, like lots of seasonal bits and pieces. And 
my cupboard in the dining room is just getting too full. So the plan was to put kind of seasonal bits and pieces that you don't need all year round in here. And it's a case of switching things out in the cupboard when the time comes around. I suppose a bit annoying, a bit of a fuss, but what do you do? So this is kind of the vibe. Now with these, I did measure this up so I could fit three lengthways, but I had actually measured them up as if they would go, if they would spin round, just because they overhang. I actually don't think it matters that it overhangs, um, but the challenge is, is that um, the third one would have fitted and maybe overhung slightly at the end there, but because of this box, that's not gonna work. So I might just use three. Basically, I was thinking like some of these would be good for things like hats and scarves and stuff. And also maybe like flip flops perhaps, like the kind of smaller shoes that you could kind of put into places. Oh, God, I need to follow down the stairs. The moment of truth, how big this really is. Um, I'm hoping it's folded up in here. is more than thick enough <laughs> it's a bit wibbledy wobbly at the moment what's that i said it's a bit wibbledy wobbly at the moment where it's been folded up let me go moment of truth <gasps> Whether this feels like this would be a good book. fabric please check fabric is the correct print and length fabric is not damaged or faulty no claims can be settled once the fabric has been cut what does that do i said to be fair i think i probably i think i've ordered way too much fabric i could be wrong but i think i have but to be honest we could use it for something else like i could have some cushions made up or anything couldn't i oh i love it oh my god i love it feels like a shame to almost have this in a cupboard it was on sale as well I say on sale. I think it was 20 something down from 30 something maybe. Wow, I love that. Oh, I'm so pleased. This is actually nicer in real life than it was is on the website, I think. Hey, what? That'd be good for curtains. I don't know if you can do curtains and that. Oh, that is just gorgeous. I've got way too much fabric. <laughs> How 
Not to Waste Money by Louisa McNally. Oh, yeah, but what you might have I done... Worried, I was worried about because of wrapping it round and stuff like that. What, what they might have done, though, is they might have... Get, it might be because they'd gone, right, what's on that roll? Oh, there's only X amount. Just give it the rest of the roll. I would have three metres, which I think was probably too much. But I was more worried that I wasn't going to have enough. Yeah. Think of it. It's nice. It's lovely. You can make some cushions out of it. <laughs> Funny. I love it. It's oak and acorn. <laughs> cushions out of this possibly um, but I really love the fabric so maybe I can use it for something else um, we are hoping to do a project up on our very top floor which is going to be our like main spare bedroom and also it's my office as well that I work from the vibe I think I'm going for that is very kind of cottage attic room inspired in some way and so I can really really imagine this kind of material in there so I can probably reuse it for something I suppose the only pain now is finding a home for it in the meantime. I guess the only shame about it is that I, it was about 20, like early 20 pounds um, per meter and I ordered three meters. And so I spent like 60 something pounds on it. And then because I wanted it to arrive for today, otherwise I was gonna have to wait till next week, I paid another like 15 to get it here for Saturday. So I, I spent about 80 pounds on the material and as I said, I definitely, I definitely did not need 80 pounds worth. its home but what I would say is I don't think I've done the fabric quite tight enough to the foam I did it as tight as I could get it by myself but I just sat on it just then and it's like rippled there which has left some creases so I think I might have to have a bit of a fiddle but that's for another day so this is the the final piece for this space which is our light so I actually originally ordered a light from Dunelm for just £10 and it was meant to be like a hanging light bulb I really love that style and we've got a few of those kind of lights in the house already um, and we were gonna have a hook up here and hang it through there but what I hadn't really appreciated, it was styled as a bedside table light when I bought it, but I hadn't really appreciated that the switch, whilst it was on quite a long lead, the switch was actually really close to the plug socket. So it would have meant that when James and I came in here, we'd have to literally crouch right down and practically turn it on at the plug. So we just left that for dead in the end. It was, it was a very cheap light, so it wasn't really worth it. Uh, 
we also pulled it apart because James tried to extend the cord and then was like this isn't going to work. <laughs> so we left that for dead and we just decided to pivot and find something else and that probably this and the bench um, cushion are probably the two things that really held this project up the most because I just couldn't make a decision, I couldn't find anything particularly on the light front. Um, but in that time, uh, brands like Pookie have started creating these kind of, ooh, let's just turn, hmm. <laughs> brands like Pookie have started to create these kind of cordless rechargeable lamps. Um, and so I decided a couple of weeks ago just to bite the bullet and get one. However, the Pookie ones are about £120 plus, And I just felt like I couldn't justify that amount of money for it to be sat in a cupboard. So I actually found this version on Amazon. It was £34, so much more reasonable. And the reason that I liked it so much is because I think it really emulates more of that Pookie style. A lot of the other ones that I saw on Amazon were a lot more kind of contemporary and, and not really what I wanted. The other reason why, sorry, I'm just moving this up. The other reason why I really liked this one was because I'd read in the reviews that people had changed the lampshade. So I liked the fact that you had that option. And I had kind of thought initially when I bought it that I would. Not that there's anything wrong with this per se, but I thought I could get something a little bit more expensive, which would just elevate this lamp um, that little bit more. Um, but now that I've kind of got it in the space, um, this is on the lowest setting at the moment. So um, there are two brighter settings. It's just the right amount of light for us to be able to do what we need to do in here, but it's by no means that bright. I, I can't compare it to what the Pookie ones are like because I've not actually seen them in real life, but there's not huge amounts of light with this. Um, and so I'm just a little bit concerned that if I got a different lampshade that it might dull that down even more. And because we are using it for the reason we're using it for, I kind of am not really willing to, to lose any more light. So yeah. That's essentially the story of this lamp. It arrived two weeks ago. You plug it in at the back here and then you um, charge it up. Apparently after charge it lasts for eight hours, but I can't judge that because we obviously only have it on for like a couple of minutes at most at a time. Um, and I have kind of every now and again just plugged it in for a bit of a recharge. So I can't comment as to when that may have run out. <laughs> Oh, you're trying to get in the cupboard. <laughs> you're so annoying. <laughs> oh my god, I just pulled on these shelves. They're going to come down before I've even done my tour. Yeah. Just plug the charger in for the other one. Okay, I'm oh. in trouble because I've not plugged the hoovers in when I meant to. <laughs> oh.